never shot an opening. Oh, he never shot an opening. All right, well, this is the opening. Um, <laughs> My name's David. I am uh, associate curator here at MIM. Going to teach you a little saxophone today. Take you through a couple of hundred years of saxophone innovation in about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. We're getting okay. into some saxophone history right now. Yeah, I don't know really much of anything. I really can't play any horn instruments. You know, I teach you know. lessons. We'll, we'll see how I am. <laughs> cool. but, uh, you're going to master it. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a serpent. Going back to the 16th century, it was used in churches as a bass instrument. You can see there's holes for the fingers. It has to be windy because there's no keys at this point. So in order to get a long tube to make low notes, it had to be bendy. Moving on from the serpent, yeah, yeah. though. Most of my experience with the saxophone is being on tour with Joe DeGeorge from nice. Harry and the Potters. Nice. He's an incredible saxophone player. <laughs> yeah. And Ron Swanson is pretty much where my saxophone knowledge starts. That's Ron Swanson's a good place to stop yeah. if you like. There's a, a lot of places to go. The Serpent isn't really a great bass instrument. By the time they started working with keys, brass instruments, an ophicleide was invented before the tuba. So this became the sort of primary bass instrument. It's a keyed conical instrument with a brass mouthpiece. And you just might notice that it looks a little bit like the saxophone. Well, this is so the bass of the horn section. If you think of like the tuba, the function that it serves now, mm -hmm. the tuba existed after the ophicleide. Okay. So the so tuba replaced the, the ophicleide because it's a, a better mm -hmm. low brass instrument. So I'm talking about these kind of low brass instruments getting towards saxophone. It doesn't make a lot mm -hmm. of sense until we walk over yeah. to the Adolf Sax exhibit. So saxophone comes from Adolf Sax. Yes, yeah, totally. So. Okay, Do I, didn't, want to go, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, he uh, loved his last name and uh, used it <laughs> copiously. He made uh, sax horns, saxo trombas, all of these instruments he put his name on. Oh, he was just putting his name on everything. Yeah, and it became a yes. big problem for him. It, it really? worked out nicely because, Why? well, the saxophone this is great. It still exists. Maybe it actually worked out well because we still know his name because yeah. we know the saxophone. But by naming things a sax horn and a saxo tromba that were essentially improvements and innovations upon pre-existing brass instruments, but patenting them in his own name and then getting <laughs> monopolies with the French government to supply bands with saxotrombas, sax horns, etc. It made... So he basically went through the orchestra and just made his own version and then put his name on it? Yeah, yeah, kind of banned brass instruments. I mean, to be fair, he was a brilliant innovator and mm -hmm. he did improve these instruments, make new versions of them. But in many cases, they were sort of variations of a pre-existing thing. And so other manufacturers started suing him because uh, they're like, that's just like my horn, but you mm -hmm. called it a sax horn. He ended Everything. up dying bankrupt because of how many lost suits he went through in his oh. life. At least three different times he declared bankruptcy. The saxophone was his one real success in terms of actually being debatably a brand new yeah. thing. I had no idea yeah, that's, uh, that the saxophone history had so much bankruptcy in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going through like We've a few hundred years in a few minutes. we Adolf Sax. When was Adolf Sax around? Yeah, so he was born in 1814. Here's an Adolf Sax saxophone. It's from his factory built around 1862. These instruments also are Adolf Sax instruments, so we like to display that he had these innovative different brass instruments, as mm -hmm. I was mentioning, along with his saxophones. He had a number of different innovations he did. His father had an instrument workshop in Belgium, so he grew up around there. It's a miracle that he even lived through it. There's all these chemicals around mm -hmm. a workshop, and he apparently ingested many different poisons and fell from great heights multiple times and somehow survived childhood. Uh -huh. By the age of 20, he had innovated the clarinet fingering system. Mm -hmm. This is just around the time key work starts to be Rather a, than a just thing. the holes? Yeah. Inventing an instrument is kind of a weird concept. We don't think of someone as the inventor of the flute because people have been playing flute-like instruments mm -hmm. in fields for thousands of years. Uh, there's no inventor of the drum. How can you invent a saxophone or a new instrument in the 19th century? But he tried and well, then put his name on he it. He puts his name on everything and claims them all as inventions. The saxophone <laughs> is his best bet, though. But it's yeah. still really just a variation, in my opinion, of an ophicleide. You look here at the patent drawing, the only difference is this mouthpiece here, which is more like a clarinet mouthpiece. So he played clarinet really well, had maybe an ophicleide that he had made, was like, what does it sound like if I put this mouthpiece on there? And then called it a saxophone? And wow, that actually is pretty good. And that becomes the saxophone. In fact, the first <laughs> mention of the saxophone in, in some sort of writing by the famous French composer Berlioz, he called it an ophicleide abec, which means 
an off the Clyde with a mouthpiece yeah. in, in French. Soon he made sure people weren't writing that anymore. He was very good at getting yeah. people to write about how nice the saxophone was. And I he, mean, clearly, I've never heard of an off the Clyde before. Yeah, and put a clarinet mouthpiece on there, and suddenly you have a keyed conical horn with a single reed, which is basically a description of a saxophone yes. made out of metal. He patents in 1845 a whole array of saxophones, and he gets them into the French military band stationed all over the world. So the saxophone starts finding uh, performances in England, America, all over the place. To be honest, the saxophone's a kind of easy instrument to learn the very right. basics of. Unlike the clarinet, which has a register key that jumps you up a twelfth the saxophone just has an octave key, so you have the same fingerings for low notes and higher notes, just pushing a button. Okay. Um, and yeah, so yeah. It, it turned out people kind of liked the saxophone. Adolf's idea, they say sometimes in the literature that this was how he was developing an instrument for this purpose, but I think it's a post hoc explanation. He said the saxophone would be a perfect thing in the orchestra to bridge the woodwinds and the brass and the strings. It can play extremely softly. Mm -hmm. It can play loud and powerfully, kind of like a brass. Berlioz was like, yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. But then he wrote all these orchestral pieces with no saxophone in it <laughs> because there weren't good saxophonists. So first, huh. he needed about 50 years of people learning how to play the instrument decently. Adolf Sax became the first saxophone professor at the Paris Conservatory. He was a very talented player. I thought I might play you an early yeah, little yeah. excerpt of a, a saxophone piece that's kind of a show piece, get the vibe of the type of music that Adolf Sax was trying to get out there to show off what the saxophone can do. I'm totally new to foreign instruments. Do you have, so you say you have an octave key, so you have two octaves on this? It's about two and a half octaves fingered. There's a couple of auxiliary keys for the lowest and the highest notes. If I finger a G and then I push this button, it's a G an octave above without having to do anything too different, which is pretty convenient and one of the few instruments that does something mm -hmm. like that so easily, which makes it easy to teach to kids because they don't have to think that many okay, different Because I'm going to have about five minutes to <laughs> play it. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm not a very good music stand. You're good. Well, sorry, let's start that over. That sounded great. Yeah. Yeah. No, it did not. <laughs> <laughs> with my jaw a little like, like you could go like wah, 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 but like real small and fast. Ah. <laughs> so what are you doing, like if you're not, without the saxophone there, what are you, what are you doing? Kind of like a quick chewing. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like wah, 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 a loosening and coming back to your embouchure. So just, uh, I literally teach the phrase wah, 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 wah to huh. students. Let's just do yeah, the nice. little bit of finale because it's a little more yeah. fun. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have gotten me into the Paris Conservatory, but uh, it's an example. <laughs> we're we're of really what, throwing you. What in. Adolf was working yeah. with. That sounded great. Thank you. You can wail on the sax. <laughs> How many keys do you have? Twelve, an octave. Five, six. Twenty. Twenty. <laughs> and I never really they... thought about it. <laughs> it's not as simple as like. Uh, you know, here's one note, and then half step, half step, half step, half step. There. Well, you can see the half steps are by each key that opens. So if I do a chromatic scale, you'll see that I'm doing different fingering patterns, but essentially what's happening is one hole up the tube opens every mm -hmm. time. And then once you press the octave key, it restarts, and then eventually you yeah. get these highest holes. So the tone yeah. well, I comes guess we should from be clear on that. whichever yeah. pitch is open. So if I'm playing the highest note with this highest thing open, the pitch is coming because of this highest 
opening, and that mm -hmm. makes the tube very short, versus when it's fully closed, you get the lowest note. Yeah, we'll be clear on that for people who might not be familiar with saxophone, like me. It just simply works by it's a tube with holes in it, and then you're opening and closing those holes, and they're different sizes and different Totally, and, but it's a complicated key system that mm -hmm. Adolf Sax was pretty innovative in, in getting sorted out, but it's also a lot like other woodwinds, so it's not super foreign to clarinet or flute playing mm -hmm. either. They have, they have similar fingering systems, and there's all kinds of tricks you learn as you yeah. go along. An <laughs> infinite amount of nuance. Right. How does the octave key work? Yeah, it's How interesting. How does it bring it all the way down an octave with one key? It brings it up an octave. Oh, so, it brings it up an yeah, octave. Yeah, so you'll see this lever at the top oh. raises, which that little is, hole is this top. little tiny vent that raises an octave. <laughs> But there's a second one here with other notes. Same button, but if I've got different fingers down, it opens through the side. So you open this, it brings it up an octave. Exactly. And that's because it's, it's letting out half of the pressure? It's opening a hole like really high up, so it's shortening the two, but it's a much smaller hole than these others. I mean, it's really enhancing a harmonic. So mm -hmm. I can, playing a low B flat, play through the harmonic series, the way you might, you know, play harmonics on a guitar. So, that is cool. So you you can do like trumpet type things. It has all the same, you know, harmonic series as other instruments. And so what this is doing is by venting open a little note, it's making it so that you automatically jump up above yeah. the fundamental that you're on to the next octave. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, don't come at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the internet might. Yeah. <laughs> and the first saxophones actually I'm... had like four octave keys. This is a mechanism that after it was invented, uh, other people started messing around with it, waiting for the patent to run out. And then they're like, oh, I figured out how to only have two octave mm -hmm. keys. And now the next person figured out how to only have one. And you'll just see that just on the first saxophone, Saxophone, there's a whole lot less keys on the side than on my saxophone. So it was kind of a, a process of adding different keys, finding that you sometimes need to go from this note to this note. And it works a lot better if you have a little roller so that it wow. kind of works Whoa, nicely and mechanically cool. together to help you get these pinky keys. Whoa. That's like a, a sweep motion. Yeah, like you, if you're a shred guitar that, player, you have the, the same sweep motion. The hardest thing for most saxophonists to get good with, I'm right-handed, <laughs> so my left pinky is definitely my least coordinated <laughs> thing. And it has to press down the lowest notes yeah. and do all this kind of weird rolling around that like oh. my more coordinated fingers don't have to deal so with. But, Sarah uh, Longfield would hate the saxophone. <laughs> she doesn't use her pinky, she's a guitar player. Uh, moving along, I wanted to show you one of the highlights of our saxophone collection yeah. made by the LeBlanc Company. So Adolf Sax dies bankrupt. Um, his... Wow, that was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> but his saxophone lives on. Do saxophone players like refer to Adolf Saxophone in... A loving way? Sure, yeah. I went to an international saxophone competition that's held every four years in mm -hmm. Dinant, Belgium, his birthplace. So, mm -hmm. plus he's like such a character. He's uh, both a difficult person who many people hated and also a quite brilliant innovator. And to try to suss through, like, was he a good person or not? I don't know, it's just an interesting subject. Um, cool, so I wanted to show yeah. you one of our collection, saxophone collection highlights. It's a very interesting instrument made in the early 1930s by the LeBlanc company. Is it as simple as just blowing into it? It's not like a trumpet where you need a... Your embouchure takes some time to get used to. Mm -hmm. You'll, I guess you'll find out how simple yeah. it is. <laughs> but uh, it can be frustrating gonna... if you have kind of not the right embouchure set up. It can be a sort of ugly sound. Essentially, you just you put your lip over your teeth and you use your top teeth on the mouthpiece. So you're like kind biting of the mouthpiece. Pinch together your muscles around your mouth so that air is not leaking out, mm -hmm. and then you blow. So this instrument is called the Rationnel saxophone. This is serial number 23. They didn't end up making a whole ton of these, but it's a beautiful instrument yeah. made of nickel silver. I love these. Uh... This, the sweep buttons. So on my saxophone, I've got this one and this one. I don't have this key. LeBlanc Company had a head acoustician named Charles Huvenagel, and he was like, you know what? The saxophone is deficient in some ways, and he wants to solve all of the problems. Another thing he wants to solve is making it so that all of the keys below whatever you're fingering are naturally open. On my saxophone, some of these keys rest closed, whereas on the rationale, they rest open. Acoustically, is supposed to have 
better intonation, just better tone response. Makes this really complicated saxophone. There's a few different keys. There's all these different key couplings. I think it says in the literature there's seven different fingerings for C. <laughs> so I can play. Can you swipe through the C? Oh, yeah. The most. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Like the most complicated C. We call that bis bigliando in uh, it's contemporary got a cool music. Sound to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the saxophone, despite being actually quite brilliant, didn't catch on. And it seems Selmer. too like it, there's it would really throw off your muscle memory to even change the buttons a little. Bit. Exactly. So that's like the QWERTY keyboard. Yeah. This is like the if, whatever if is maybe. If he had been around efficient. in 1860, and then everybody was like, oh, that is better, and all of us would be playing saxophones of this system. But by 1930, it became not super viable. Yeah. This one's not super virtuosic, it's just pretty. This is the second movement of Pictures at an Exhibition, The Old Castle. <laughs> pretty version of what could have been for the orchestra if only Adolf Sachs had been born like 50 years earlier. And that <laughs> instead, that would probably be an English horn solo or something. So this last little bit. One sec here. We do have 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes to learn how to play it? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I've got a brand new read for you. Cool, thanks. You don't share reads? Uh, I mean, here's a read. Are you like, if you're close friends, do you share reads with someone? Is that what's, no. what's the... <laughs> no, <you don't. laughs> I will share a saxophone with someone, but I will always have my own mouthpiece yeah. and reeds to, to use on it. A reed is just a thin piece of wood. Yeah, a piece of cane. So you're going to want to put that in your mouth and which, get it wet. Way? Like This end. So the thin end is the one that vibrates. All the sound comes from the vibration of the reed. Uh, the, really? the length of the tube is deciding what rate it vibrates at, but that's actually the sound producing mechanism. So this is where you're getting your harmonics from. Exactly. Yeah, everything comes from your reed vibration. Like that? Yeah, so you'll, you need to just get it wet. You don't want to suck on it because you can warp it, but you just want to like drool all over it. Tastes so. nice. <laughs> they uh, have flavored ones for mm. kids. Saxophone is but, delicious. Yeah. So then let's hook you up here. Do you feel like it is sufficiently wet? That is not going to work don't know. for you. Okay. What's not going to work? Here we go. The way you were trying to put your read on. Gonna... I have no, yeah, I have it's no cool. idea. Here, here's what we do. Kind of take your ligature off. Okay. I'm gonna put the flat part on the mouthpiece. So the That's reed one. is basically okay. even with the end of the mouthpiece. All right. So then you put the ligature over. You wanna get the ligature down a little bit on basically onto the base of the reed mm -hmm. and then tighten it. Nice and lined up. I didn't realize that. The vibration is such, that's like your string almost. Yeah, and then this amp, this wall changes the pitch. It doesn't yeah, everything it. needs something to vibrate. So yeah. the brass instrument is your lips. Yeah. Uh, single reed, it's the reed that oh, is so the, the vibrating. Of course, that's why part. with Trump you have to go like, yeah. like that. Exactly. The air on its own will Not do anything. nothing, but. You can. <laughs> Has you ever played just reed? Uh, can you play just reed? Yeah. You can practice your vibrato, or I've practiced circular breathing that way while like driving in my car, which is totally not safe. But, like, <laughs> you know, so that sounds like work. what Public Enemy song is that? Radio suckers never play me. Well, how do I hold cool. this thing? So, you're there. You go. You're gonna put one finger yeah, okay. there, one there, one there. Okay. The per. There you go. Okay. Okay. You got it. Bring the a little bit closer to you so that the mouthpiece actually like comes towards your mouth and you don't oh, that's hold a, that's it up. Cool. Where do I put my thumb here? Oh, just right, right here. Right there. Yeah. Lip over your teeth. Put your teeth. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. That's it. Cool. Take a big breath and blow. See what happens. You're biting too hard, baby. <laughs> Try again. There you go. <laughs> oh man. I don't normally do this. I know, it's, it's, I wear a little piece of like tape on my teeth because it hurts my lip. <laughs> don't bite too hard, but blow a lot. <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> you had it. I got one note. <laughs> Loosen up a little bit and blow a lot of air. 
Blow a lot of air, don't bite too hard. <laughs> We're gonna need to work on your breathing. <laughs> you got support from your diaphragm. <laughs> That's my kind of sound, yeah. <laughs> now move, move your fingers around a little bit. Yeah, you okay, so give me, give me like a half step. If you just do this note and then open it up, you've got B and C sharp, so that's a whole step. Okay. And then is it just like, like does that make sense? You don't want to push on that key, it's a different one. I'm okay. Too, too complicated. So B, A, and then G. And you push so like that. that. Yeah. It's it's really hard to, to like really put a lot of air into it without biting. Yeah. That's it's like hard to separate those two. Classic. Yeah, yeah, give me, yeah, go ahead. Nailed it. <laughs> I got kind of some something somewhat musical here. That's not the active key, is it? This guy? Oh no, it is. Yep. I'm not getting an octave though. Yeah, you gotta have a. I gotta, I gotta be better. To some okay, okay, yeah. it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, shaking your finger. Yeah, the vibrato isn't doing anything. Oh, I wish I had more time with this. If you had one week with a saxophone and a fingering chart, you would have some tunes sorted out. It's yeah, it could come up really not that difficult and could be fun. Yeah, it would be fun. Well, that's a, good, that's a good note to end on, that if you want to learn the saxophone, apparently, expert right here, it's not that difficult. The basics. <laughs> or maybe I'll just get a good honk, and then we'll go right to the end screen. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> that's as much as I can do in this time. Thanks to the Musical Instrument Museum here in Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks so much for the lesson. Subscribe to my channel if you would like to. I'm sure this isn't the last time I embarrass myself on the internet. And we'll see you next week. It's our 10th anniversary here at MIM. Come to the museum. There's concerts all the time and always great instruments to see. I'm kind of starting to get this. Yeah, a little so bit. you want to put this finger there. We have to go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we have to go. All right. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah, man. My pleasure.